Hello friends, and welcome to Lizzie Art Stuffs. Uh, today, I am actually celebrating my seven year anniversary uh, with my husband, and because of that, I drew something kind of special today. Shout out, by the way, to Bethany Draper, who donated me this huge, awesome, beautiful pad of watercolor paper. I can't tell you how excited I am. And I was thrilled for the chance to use it. Um, for anyone who's wondering, it's actually like, well, first of all, it's Strathmore, which is amazing. But it's 140 pound watercolor paper. I don't know if you guys can see that. It might be backwards. Sorry if it's backwards. But it's great stuff. Uh, this is the first time I've actually used Strathmore. So this is like supposed to be like creme de la creme as far as watercolor paper. But we will see. Because I just, you know, <laughs> uh, let me know what you guys think about the watercolor paper. Does it seem like pretty good? I mean, it didn't buckle on me at all, which I think is amazing. Um, anyways, so I'll go ahead and run the clips. So you guys can see how everything turned out. And here we go. All right. So for this particular piece, I actually did start out, I painted... A little bit before I started the video. Um, the reason being that I sketched out uh, what I wanted to do as far as like the Rottweiler's face and and their head but um, I started painting it and then I realized I was like why am I not making a video about this because this is my first time using Strathmore watercolor paper first of all and second of all even if it wasn't my first time using Strathmore uh, watercolor paper um, it's always good to see the full process. So this is the almost full process, as I like to say. Um, so, uh, what I'm kind of doing here is just with the way that I use watercolors, I like to lay down, um, kind of the base layers first, so to speak, which in this case, I felt like the orange that's around the mouth and the eyebrows and the ear would be especially prevalent and important to put out first. Um, mostly just because black has a tendency to just wipe out everything it comes in contact with. Um, that's actually the number one reason why you'll hear lots of artists tell you, hey, maybe you should not use black at all. Um, I kind of disagree with that because I think that there's a time and a place for the color black, personally. I think it can add a lot of contrast to your piece. It can add a lot of focus as well. Um, so, I mean... And that's why some people will, like, use no black except the pupils of the eye, and those will be black. And then it really draws your eyes to that character's eyes because, oh my goodness, <laughs> look at all that contrast, that's pure black. Um, but I think one of the benefits with watercolors is if you add water, the color autom automatically becomes less saturated. And in the case of black, it starts becoming more gray. Uh, that actually presented quite the problem when I was painting in this kind of scenario because uh, you'll see later on I actually struggled quite a bit going dark enough in some of the lighter areas. I basically had like pure black and then I had uh, light gray everywhere else, which was super great. <laughs> um, but on the plus side, uh, the it worked out in the end, I think. Uh, you guys will just have to stick around to see exactly what I mean by that. So as far as like the shapes and everything that are in this actual like photo, um, you'll notice that I do have kind of a normal eye shape for the dog's eyes. And here's kind of a fun thing is that it's not just a normal shape, you guys. <laughs> um, one thing I struggle with sometimes is not putting down lines. So, to clarify, I put down too many lines, making everything look kind of cartoony and outlined, which I, I'm pretty okay with that as far as like a stylistic choice, but occasionally I want to put a little more realism into my artwork, and if I'm always adding lines everywhere, it's like, where's the realism guy? So, I... I, I kind of struggled with the eyeballs on this dog because there are legitimately like like the whole eye is basically outlined with sh with very thin and sharp shadows 
and even the um, the iris around the iris actually has some shading as well. Um, I should, I mean, comment below if you want me to do like an art video about eyeballs because I'm actually pretty decent at painting those. I practiced quite a bit when I was trying to get something together for uh, my uncle. I wanted to paint him this like eyeball that was like looking into a space galaxy and it was really cool. Um, but because of it, I did like, I mean, when you have one eyeball taking up a full like 12 inch page, I mean, it's, you, you learn a little bit about some of the details about the eyeball you might otherwise miss. Um, which is one of the reasons why artists say practice makes perfect. So I believe them. It is true, without a doubt. <laughs> oh. So after putting in the orange, I ended up putting in some of the kind of lighter shading portions. Um, there really isn't much white as far as the actual face of the Rottweiler goes. Uh, I figured that I'd be leaving the Rottweiler in a regular white background. I know that some people have problems with the subject just floating in empty space. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in the white void. Like, I, nobody likes that, right? Well, at least that's what some people think. In my case, I actually don't mind the white void. Um, I think sometimes it can draw the right attention to your subject, and I think that's one of the reasons why it's used, uh, especially in modern art pieces. Um, but that's just, I mean, I tell you, modern art's a story for another day. Um, that's actually something that I've considered doing kind of like a, an episode of Lizzie Art Stuff's on, because uh, there's a lot of commentary about what actually makes art and what does not constitute art. And I think it's starting that conversation that makes modern art so exciting. Um, I, if, you, if you don't have the conversation and you just see like a single dot on a canvas, then you're not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> then, then yeah, it's not going to seem super artistic. But once you start getting some of the meaning behind it, then you start having to question, hmm, meaning, is that what makes the art? Hmm. <laughs> Seriously, it's crazy. There's an entire philosophy behind it, and it's so fascinating. Um, and actually, as far as, like, future video plans, I do also hope to do one that's kind of about um, art history things. Um, and I have to just say art history things because here's the deal, I am not super well versed in art history. Like I wish I was, but the truth of the matter is is that <laughs> I have never taken like an art history class. Normally I just took art classes in school and you do assignments and occasionally the art teacher brings up something or you have to you know, study like Van Gogh and some of the, like, we did a reproduction of Starry Night, which <laughs> I should try repainting that sometime for you guys. That would be fun too. But, um, yeah. And I, I was really sad because I ended up leaving my art classes and my skill had definitely improved, but I left feeling like I sorely missed out on a very solid part of my art education. Which, to be fair, they're trying to squeeze all of this art practice and make you a better artist, so I don't blame the teacher or anything. I was just sitting there and I was like, maybe eventually I should take an art history class because I really want to learn this information. And I sat there and I was like, Lizzie, why are you waiting for a class when the good and mighty Google is out there and just waiting for your little fingertips to type it a little question. It'll even suggest stuff for you. You can say famous painters like and it will put a whole list of famous painters <laughs> that you can learn about. Um, granted, if I did anything art history, I would probably have to source Wikipedia at some point or another and I know someone's gonna be like, how dare you? <laughs> but here's the deal, you guys. <laughs> I'll try not to, <laughs> but I make no guarantees whatsoever. Oh, and just coming back to the painting that we're doing right now, um, with the Rottweiler, I was putting in some of these darker areas. Uh, this is when I started using more of the straight black. Um, that's why the contrast is so high. 
Um, the value difference definitely was a struggle, kind of like I mentioned earlier, so you'll see me start to try to, like, uh, draw hairs in between the values to try to even them out a little bit. Uh, quick, like, quick and dirty tip for if you're ever drawing hair or fur, like, you can totally do that. <laughs> and it works, so... It doesn't work all the time. Like in my case, I ended up having to mix another medium value, which, by the way, for those of you who hate pure black, I did mix in a bunch of blue, and I actually think that it worked out really well for uh, creating a little more interest into the piece. Um, because not only does it make sure that the black's not completely black, but it is a complement of orange, which is in... Uh, Rottweiler's like mouth and stuff so it it worked out fairly decently I would say <laughs> uh, and poking in those little whisker things in the lips I tell you those I don't even know what they're called I call them whisker dots usually but <laughs> they're so dang cute I drew a seal earlier this year and uh, he had tons of those things and huge whiskers. I hadn't even realized how huge seal's whiskers were until I like actually tried to draw it from reference and then I was like, holy crap, these are like longer than cat whiskers, like proportionately speaking, like that's pretty insane. But I mean, different animals use whiskers for different purposes, I guess. I mean. I almost called a spider mandible whiskers just barely and then I caught myself, so congratulations to me. So um, this was kind of a surprise for my husband, Jimmy, and so he, he ended up seeing it a day before our anniversary because he was being awesome and going and taking care of one of our babies who requires much of the attentions. And while he was walking behind me, he happened to glance at the monitor and see my reference just sitting out for the world to see, which is really on me. I mean, I didn't really have another time I could paint it, but I probably should have warned him beforehand. And then when I heard him getting up, I had that moment of like indecision where I was like, do I tell him he needs to sit down? <laughs> do I tell him, do not look at my screen, whatever you do, and just make him wrestle with that temptation? Because let's be honest, as soon as someone says, hey, don't look at this, what do we all do? You look. Like, that's it, it's your automatic response. Oh, what am I not supposed to look at? Okay, great. I'm going to not look at that from now on. Like, <laughs> It's the like one look rule. You get one look and then you no longer look at it. And for some reason, I feel like so many people are built in with that, and I, so I don't, I don't blame nobody, but <laughs> he'd already seen the reference, he already knew I was drawing a Roddy, so I was like, okay, what if I give you this, and I say give pretty, like, loosely, <laughs> because it's still in the... It's still in the watercolor pad, you guys. <laughs> I need to figure out how to exacto knife this thing out because the pages aren't perforated. That's my only bad thing I have to say about Strathmore so far, by the way. <laughs> no perforations, so tearing them out is pretty much like, well, I hope this works, and please don't tear my drawing. The end. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we, we work it out all right. Um, but I'm on the plus side, like I, I sat, I sat Jamie down and I was like, all right, I want to know on a scale of like one to 10 stars, how would you rate this? Like, you know, one star, two star, three pickle nuggets. And then he stopped and he turned to me and he was like, Lizzie, what is even a pickle nugget? And I was just like, you know, kind of like a baby pickle that you go and buy from the store and you eat them and they're snack sized so they're delicious <laughs> and then he appropriately called me a weirdo and I never actually got a rating out of him so <laughs> Jimmy if you're listening you still need to rate your art <laughs> um, he did say he liked it though so I would say it's probably at least three pickle stars like <laughs> We didn't really establish a firm rating system on that. Um, but it all worked out in the end, I think. Oh, goodness. And I tell you, I can, I could just draw pets for days. Like, I, I'm sometimes good with requests, sometimes I'm not so good, so I haven't really done a, like, post your pet thing yet or anything like that. 
Well, plus I haven't made a... As of the date of this video, I haven't made an artist Facebook page yet, but if you're watching this in the distant future, you should probably check and see if I made one. Um, because that is in the plan eventually. Uh, I just wanted to try drawing a self-portrait first before I put one of those up because, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of expected almost, question mark? Where, like, you're an artist, so why don't you draw your little icon thumbnail thing? And it's like, maybe I don't want to. <laughs> At the moment, it's just, hey, I look nice in this photo. Back off, guys. <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's all right. To each their own, right? Oh, but as it is, I currently plan on opening up a Facebook page, if nothing else, just so I can get, like, requests and I can do little contests and things. Um, mostly things like draw your followers and stuff like that, but, um, I mean, we also have Instagram out there, so if you haven't followed me yet on Instagram, you can always pop up on there, and I do draw stuff that I see on Instagram. Um, I am technically on Pinterest, but I don't remember if I'm under Lizzie Art Stuffs or not. So, good luck finding me. If you do, awesome. <laughs> I might draw you if you pop up in my feed. Like, <laughs> the cool thing about being an artist is that you get inspired by all kinds of things around you. Oh, man. I tell you, and this was really a fun drawing to do. I, I personally am inspired by a lot of things when it comes to Rottweilers, but most of them honestly include my husband because he had Rottweilers growing up and he really taught me to like how to fall in love with the breed, so to speak. Um, and I say that because, I mean, there are lots of dogs out there that get a bad rep, um, you know, and sometimes, you know, for the most part, a dog is only crazy or aggressive if they're trained up that way. I mean, they definitely all have their different personalities, and some are harder to work with than others, and I will grant that. But, like, there was a legitimate scientific study done that, you know, studied Rottweilers and pit bulls, and they said that they couldn't support breed-specific law because there was no evidence supporting that it would be effective in any way, shape, or form. Um, basically bringing us back to if we want to fight the issue of, like, dog aggression, we really need to be, like, really going into, like, training classes and training, you know, teaching people how to train with puppies and, and how to appropriately reward your pet, how to give them mixed, you know, how you might be giving them mixed signals, I think is really important, too. That's one that I had to learn, let's say, the hard way. <laughs> Um, I didn't get better or anything while we're talking about, like, crazy stuff that happens, but, um, definitely I've had some close calls, so to speak, but, oh, goodness, when you can, when you can really train your dog right, and you can really earn their trust and loyalty, that's, that's one of the greatest things, that's why, that's why they're called man's best friend, you guys, <laughs> and, like, cats come in as, like, man's second best friend, when he wants to. <laughs> oh my goodness. I do love cats too, though, you guys. I have, if you've followed me on Instagram, you know I've been drawing some cats lately, so. Um, I drew this rainbow cat that I thought was so much fun. It was little Bella, my friend Rachel's cat. Oh my goodness. She's like a little snowball, but her her white fur, like, refracted all of this light, and I was like, ooh, I bet I could really play with that. Sure enough, I absolutely could. <laughs> it was so much fun, you guys. <laughs> Reflected light. I am all about that life. I, I actually legitimately entered a piece into the county fair in my state. <laughs> Our county fair is a great county fair. And I was one of like 30 people that entered it. <laughs> I mean, some people brought in, like, five things, and I was like, to judge against what? Like, <laughs> hardly anybody entered, I felt like. State Fair was a lot more competitive from what I understood, but it was just funny, you know, honestly. And I I got some really great feedback, and I, I really enjoyed it. And I so what I submitted, though, was a portrait of a person this time, which was really out of my comfort zone at the time. But she had... Um, 
It was a backlit portrait, but it also had a key light. And it was like taken in a night area, so most of it was black with key features illuminated by a blue light on one side and by a pinkish reddish light on the other side. So it looked so neat, you guys. And my reference was stellar, and I'm so glad I had the opportunity to paint that and submit it for judgment and stuff. Um, I did miss the state fair this last year, but this upcoming year, I, I might submit it for judgment. Who knows? We'll see. Um, but that's kind of the gist. So, anyways, this Roddy's pretty much about done, just doing some final details with a micron pen. Um, that's one thing, I don't quite have a watercolor brush small enough to do detail like that, so we just kind of wing it with this thing. Anyways, but hopefully you guys like the end result. Who let the dogs out? Ta da! <laughs> so, some of you might not know, but we actually uh, used to have a Rottweiler. Uh, she was one of the first dogs that we had when we moved into our house. And her name was Athena. So, this is. It's not an exact picture of Athena, but it's pretty dang close. Like, this could be, like, her cousin. <laughs> and honestly, I'm so excited that I was able to draw it and just kind of celebrate us doing seven years. And holy crap, I can't believe it's already been seven. And you know what? Next year it's going to be eight. Time flies all the time. <laughs> not just when you're having fun. Um, luckily, in our case, it was lots of fun, though. Anyways, uh, go ahead and let me know what you guys think below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good fun, and I hope to see you guys there. Bye!